options of you. I'm trying to pray, but where are you? I'm all church down, hurt and abused. I can't face what's left to do. Truth is I'm weak, no strength to fight, no tears to cry. Even if I try, but still my soul refuses to die. Mm -hmm. One touch will change my life. Take me to the king. I don't have much to bring. My heart is broken pieces. It's my offering. Lay me at your throne. Leave me there alone to gaze upon your glory. To sing to you this song. Take me to the King. Truth is in time to stop playing these games. We need a word for the people of pain. So Lord, speak right now. Let it fall our rain. We're desperate. We're chasing after you. No rules, no religion. I made my decision to run to you, the healing that I need. Send me to the king. you. 
And if they hurt you, they're not of God. Oh my God, did I say that loud? God's people won't hurt God's people. Godly people won't hurt people. Hurt people hurt people. So when people hurt you, you got to get past that hurt in order for you to grow. Holding grudges, holding ill will, having issues will stunt your growth. You can't go any further holding on to stuff that has nothing to do with your growth. So I said, take me to the king. All I got is me. My heart is broken. My heart is torn. I got to get better. I got to do better. Take me to the king. Good evening, beautiful people. God bless you. God keep you. Hope that you had a wonderful day. I hope you had a prosperous day, productive day. I'm so glad to see you on this evening. We thank God for another chance to give him some glory, to talk about his word, to say, God, we thank you for allowing us to share your word. Amen. Amen. God bless you all. Tonight, we're going to be talking. Last week, we talked about family. This week, we're going to talk about Isaiah. Isaiah's mission. And if you do in the church like talking about it, this is for this is one of the familiar passages of scripture. Isaiah the sixth chapter, one through eight. Isaiah's mission. That's what we're gonna be talking about tonight. And uh you know first we're gonna start out with prayer, then we'll go into that. Okay? Isaiah's commission. Isaiah six, one through eight. Father, we thank you for this moment. We thank you for this evening. God, we thank you for all that you've done, you're going to do, and you're doing. God, we thank you for allowing us to get through our days, God. It may not have been at all good, but God, we know that all things work together for the good. We thank you for what you allowed to happen in our lives, God, that made us better, stronger, wiser. God, we thank you for this lesson of tonight. As we go through the lesson, open up our hearts, minds, and understanding that we may receive your word and understand that we all have a commission. And we all have to complete our commission to be for you to say, servant, well done. God, as I teach this lesson, we will be able to play the words that you would have me to say. It will be all of you and none of me. For the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be covered in my sight, my Lord, Jesus, and Redeemer. In Jesus' name. And God bless those I can see, those I can't see, and the ones that will be on later. God, we thank you. In Jesus' name. Amen and amen. God bless you is my prayer. Thank God for all of you being here on tonight. And as I said, we're going to be talking about Isaiah's commission. Isaiah chapter 1 through 8. There's some very important points in here. And I like the way this first verse starts out. Because sometimes we can't do what God tells us to do because we got stuff in the way. We got people in the way. We have situations in the way. And so when those situations, people, things, places move out of our way, then we can see God. Hello, Sister Linda Coleman. It says, In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw I saw also the Lord sitting upon a throne, high and lifted up, and his train filled the temple. Now it says, In the year that King Uzziah died. Now, the significance of King Uzziah was he was a king at that time and 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 Isaiah was one of his servants. But sometimes we get so busy doing things, mm -hmm. we get so busy serving mm -hmm, till we don't know, we forget who we serve to. We get so busy, we forget what our moment is. We forget our purpose. We want to be seen being busy. But what are you doing? Oh, I'm doing stuff. What are you doing? What's your purpose? Sometimes we're so busy doing things. We're so busy doing for others. We're so busy finishing other folks' projects. Oh, my God. That we don't do what God tells us to do. So what does God have to do? Move people, things out of the way. Sometimes it's not the way we want it to be moved. But God says, this is how I need to get your attention. So he says, in the year that King Uzziah died, 
I saw also the Lord. He said, also, well, also, the same year that I saw King Uzziah die, I saw something a little better. I saw the Lord. And not only was he just, just, he just appeared, but he was sitting on a throne, high and lifted up. And his train, let me help you out. Hey, beloved. It said his train, now y'all know, now I know, let's think back a few years. Now, this is the only, I know some folks have some trains, but this is the one that inspired me that when I got married, I was going to have a train. If I had nothing else, I was going to have a long train. Princess Diana, oh my goodness, y'all can remember, y'all don't look it up after we get there. She had this wooey train. I mean, it was wide, it was long, and it was like, hey. And can you imagine the train of God filling the temple? Now, if God got a train, you know, he the king of the king, he the main, he the king of kings, the king of kings of the king. So if his train filled the temple, don't you know that's some power? His train was big enough and wide enough to fill the temple. What would you do if God's glory was spread all over the temple like that? You know, I would lose my mind. Sometimes we get in, in services and we have, I hope you do, then you know, you, you have those services where God just be like, and you just enjoy God, so you like, man, God, you know what? <laughs> if you take me on to heaven, I mean, that's okay. But if you take me on to heaven, I'll be just fine. <laughs> but God be like having you in these, oh my goodness, moments. So I still was having one of those moments. But then the, realize, the realization came in that Isaiah's a man, and he can't look on God, and the angels got sense enough to know they can't look on God either, because God is a powerful being. Huh? Okay, so they, they, he said, above it, above it, the throne, above it, through the seraphim, each one had six wings. With twain, he covered his face. With twain, he covered his feet. And with twain, he did fly. And you said, now wait a minute. He covered his face. He covered his feet. And with twain, he did fly. Six one. So they had, it said, it's a song that says, if I had two one. And they didn't want six, they just wanted two wings. They are fly from down here. But these wings, these, these seraphims, these were angels of God that had six wings. They were there to protect, to cover. Because if I say had looked at God, now see, he said, I saw the Lord, but you can't look up on God and live. But he saw his presence. He felt his presence. He saw the presence of God. His glory filled the temple. Can you imagine God's glory filling the temple? And then these angels, they weren't just angels just to show up and didn't have nothing to do. They were ministering angels. They were worshiping angels. Now, how is it that the angels have sense enough to worship God, but some of us don't? Not us. Some people don't. They said they cried one to another. They sang to themselves. They they talked about it among themselves. They looking at each other and said, "Man, y'all know we we get in service real good. We looking at the girl. This is some good church. Oh good, yeah, the Lord is up in here today. Yeah." And so the angels say, "Hey, so God, don't let them know." It said, "Holy, holy, holy. Woo, my God, holy. Ain't no flaw in God." Ain't no half stepping in God. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is the what? The whole earth is full of his glory. Everywhere you look, you see God's glory. You see the heaven. God's glory. You see the clouds. God's glory. You see the birds. God's glory. You see the animals. God's glory. You see the water. Or whatever kind of water. God's glory. And you look at you. God's glory. Everything you see. Hey, child. 
Everything you see is God. Everywhere you look, we look at one another, God's glory. We don't all look the same. We all have our own unique look. Yeah, we may look like mama, we may look like daddy, but you still look like you. You got some of the features, but you still you. Look around. The whole earth is full of God's glory. That's why I tell people, you can say what you want to about Mars, Jupiter, Pluto, whatever, whatever, whatever. Those planets were just out there to decorate the sky. They were not meant to live on. God does not talk about Saturn. He don't talk in his word. He don't talk about Saturn. He don't talk about Jupiter. He don't talk about Pluto. He don't talk about none of these planets. The only one he talks about is Earth. So it said the whole Earth is full of his glory. Now let me show you how strong, how, how strong his power is. See, when God's power and his glory gets to get to getting together, here's some stuff happen. You can't tell me that the presence of God, you felt the presence of God and ain't nothing happened. You can't tell me that God came to visit and didn't nothing happen. Yeah, yeah, I felt it, but you know, it just went up. No, baby, you didn't feel. You, you didn't feel. Me. You had a moment. You didn't have an experience. Oh, my God. Woo, Jesus. Isaiah had an experience. He said, in the year that King us, I said, he had something to, to connect it with. In the year that I also saw the Lord, and then his swing to the temple. He said, and the post of the door moved at the voice of him that cried. Oh, my God. And the house was filled with smoke. I don't know about y'all. I don't know. I don't know if y'all ever been able to be in a service where the service was so high that when you looked at the floor, you saw smoke. And it wasn't dusty. It wasn't dust. It was the smoke. It was the glory of the Lord. That's the thing. Oh, my God. That's a powerful presence. And you begin to walk. And you know you're walking. You know you're dancing in the Lord. But your feet are light because God's glory is in the place. And because his power, his glory is so strong, his power is so effervescent, his power is just, ooh, we, the post of the door moves. But wait, <laughs> it said the post of the door moves. That's what holds the door up, is the post of the door. But see, it didn't say the building shifted. Oh, my God. It didn't say the building shifted. It didn't say, oh, oh wait. The building didn't fall. It just moved. <laughs> because everything was still in line. So God don't do nothing out of order. God don't do nothing that's catastrophic. When he wants you to feel his presence, he's going to switch some things around, but you ain't going to be hurt. He's going to switch some things around, but you're not going to fall. He's going to switch some things around, but it's like, ooh, we. Now I felt that. God, that was good. Oh, my God. I feel your anointing. I feel your presence. God is just good. Oh my goodness. It's saying the post of the door moved and the voice of him that cried. Because when God speaks, stuff happens. God was really in that place. Is there a difference? Who all felt? How was the feeling? Things happen. People are healed. People are touched. People are delivered. They're set free. They're made whole when God's glory, when God's presence is allowed, oh my God, to move. We usher the Lord in and then we try to usher him out. And if you don't want him, don't let him, don't be asking him to come in. Because when he come in, he going to come in. When he come in, he going to come in. So when you usher in, the Lord say, Lord, have your way. Make sure you mean that. And then when you say, have your way, get out the way. And he'll push you out the way. You're trying to kill what he started. And then you try to, you, no, uh-uh. When God is present, when God is moving, you get out the way till he's done. Even when you're speaking, when you're teaching, when God is done, you should be done. Let me go a little more. No, God said, God said I'm through. I'm done. You still going. What God has done, you don't be sure. He said, then set out. Now, after we get an experience with God, when we see 
ourselves. When we get a when we get an experience with God, we begin to see ourselves. God shows us. God puts up a mirror. It's not your mirror, cause your mirror says you cute. Your mirror says you're flawed. Your mi- your mirror says you are all that and then so. Baby. Your mirror says you rock. Your mirror says, oh my God, baby, they can't touch you. Uh, mm-hmm. Heck yes. You are numero uno. And then God shows you his mirror. Oh, who is this? Face all messed up. Hair jacked up. Look like somebody done beat me down. What? what? Yeah, that's what you look like to me. See? Don't worry, I look like, yeah, that's what you look like to me. But God, I, when I look at them, yeah, that's when you look at me. You don't want to see you. How, okay. How is it when we look in the mirror, we see other folks? How is it that when we look in the mirror, we see other folks. When we look in the mirror, when we just look at God's mirror, we should see us. See, we, we do that self-examination thing a little backwards. Well, see, Lord, I know I do this, but see, I'm not like somebody, the Republican and the, and the, and the, and the, the Republican and the, oh, Lord. The Republican, it was the two people that came up, the Republican and the poor man. The, man, the rich man, or whoever it was, he was like, I'm glad I'm not like this man right here. I sin a little bit. I don't sin like this. What you need to do is say, God, I'm sorry. God, I, I'm nothing. I, I need you to fix me. I need you to clean me up, God. I, I, I'm nasty. I'm looking at your mirror. Again. I'm looking nasty. I need you to fix me. I need you to clean me up. I don't have time to worry about what somebody else is doing. I don't have time to be worried about how somebody else is looking. I need you to get me straight. I'm pointing fingers at all these other folks. You, know, you don't do it. You ain't doing it. You ain't doing it. And then I find I, I found myself in hell and they in hell. Because they were smart enough to say, oh, woe is me. This is what he said. He said, woe is me. That's what Isaiah said. I looked at myself and God showed me myself in the mirror. And when I saw myself in God's mirror, I said, woe is me. Oh, I'm under. I'm done. I'm pitiful. I'm pathetic. I'm looking at God's mirror. I thought I was good just because I go to church every Sunday. I thought I was good. I'm at Bible study on Wednesday. I thought I was good. I pay my tithe. I thought I was good. I pay my outfit. I thought I was good. I made every service the church had. I thought I was good. But what do you do when you're not in the face of your church members? Woe is me, for I am undone because I am a man of unclean lips. You don't have to curse to be unclean, to have unclean lips. You don't have to use profanity to have unclean lips. What does your conversation consist of? What are you talking about when you talk? Who? Are you talking about when you talk? How are you talking about others? Are you putting folks down? That's unclean. Mm. When you putting folks on, putting their name on side of spreading their business, that's unclean. When you dragging preachers through the mud, unclean. When you dragging you and your family and all this kind of stuff through the mud, unclean. He said, "I am a man of unclean lips." And not only that, I hang around some nasty folks. Oh my, ooh, did I? Okay. I'm in the, I dwell in the midst of a people of unclean lips. You know, you hang around, you could be good. You could be pretty. You could be all, you start hanging around with ratchet folks, they're going to call you ratchet. You hang around with nasty folks, they're going to call you nasty. You hang around hoes, they're going to wonder about if you are, uh, you hang around backwards, backwards folks, they're going to wonder if you backwards. Yeah, I know you go to church, but you hang around them. I don't ever see you around church folks. I don't never see you around holy folk. I don't never see you around good folks. So you always around them, them messed up folks. So what you doing? 
What your life consists of? What you what 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 is it? What what? So as they say in the street, birds of a feather. So if I'm not ministering, all I'm doing is hanging out. Here, folks gonna start claiming and calling you what they know the others are. So you got to understand your light is important to the world. Let your light so shine. Do you have a light? Is it on? Does the bulb need change? Does the bulb need change? Lord, eternal development. Ah, LED. You have it. You, you need his light. The LED. You know the LED lasts a long time. So you need the Lord's LED. Lord's eternal development. Because you're eternally healed. And you're de his development. So he's developing you as well. So you need to find out what kind of bug do you have in your lamp. Do you have oil in your lamp while I'm talking? Okay, let me get it. So I dwell in the midst of a people of unclean lips. For mine eyes have seen the king, the Lord of hosts. I have seen the Lord, so I know my life is messed up. Because I'm not trying to fix the word to fit my life. I'm trying to fix my life to fit the word. Let me say that again. I'm not trying to fix the word to fit my life. I'm trying to fix my life to fit his word. If I skip this part, God won't hold me accountable. Yep, because see, you know it's there. So he, you know that, okay. I'm not going to deal with that, so God's not going to hold, hold me accountable. But see, you know it's there. I don't have to do everything. Yes, you do. It's the Bible. You have to do it. There's mistakes in the Bible. Is there? There are no mistakes. Why do you think that there are mistakes? Bible was written to hold us in slavery. Then so why are we still? And they're still bound. Ah, y'all better, y'all need to listen to what's really going. Y'all do what? We're free. No longer bound. No change. Holding me. My soul is rich. Ain't that a blessing? Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I'm free. Hmm. Hallelujah. Come on, sister Montgomery. You are, might be the only Bible. Folks, come on now. What is your life saying? If I turn a page, what will I see? He said, For mine eyes have seen the king, the, the king, the Lord of hosts. Then flew one of the seraphims unto me, having a live coal in his hand, which he took, which he had taken with the tongues from off the altar. Hold on. He said, then flew one of the seraphim, the angel flew and got a live coal. That means it was hot. You know, like you when you barbecue and you light them up and they turn white. You know they read it. The live coal. It's hot. He took it with the tongue. Because it was too hot. The angel and says enough to know the cold was hot. But then he did something else. And he laid it up on my mouth and said, Lo, this has touched thy lip. Wait. Oh, 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 oh. This live cold was too hot for the angel's hand. But just right. And it was good enough to purge. He said, and that iniquity is taken away, and that sin is purged. That was a symbol of the Holy Ghost. And with y'all live cold is hot. It's fiery. So it was too hot for the angels. But just right for Isaiah's lips. I heard 
My daddy preached a message years ago. I using this same text. I've been kissed by the Father. Y'all been kissed. Oh, good day. I've been kissed. Have you been kissed by the Father? See, if you've been kissed by that fire, you should be talking right. If you've been kissed by the fire, then you know what to say right. Your words should be salted with favor and sweetness and kindness. As if malice and foulness, wretchedness and nastiness always right. What you say, you're a Santa God? Come on. Because God's people together. Together. And better. Not bitter. Bitter. And better. That's not a problem. But that cold was touched and touched his lips. But then he knew his iniquity was taken away and his sin is purged. Now he's ready. God has allowed, God has saved you. God has got you, got you ready for him. And now you are ready. It wasn't a hard thing. It wasn't something he had to think about. Because he knew what God had just done for him. He knew what God had just done for him. He knew what God had just Done for him. He said there has been an experience with God. Not only did I see him, but I felt, hey, glory. I, not only did I see him, but I felt him. Not only did I see him, but my, my the place shifted. Not only did I see him, but I, saw, I heard his voice. Not only did I see his voice, but I felt his power. The power was in that cold. The cold touched his lips, and the angel said, This has been, this, this is your, your iniquity, I'm sorry, your iniquity is taken away, and your sin is Everything that was not like me is now gone. All the stuff you had in you that you were dealing with is gone. All that sinfulness and that messed upness you had is gone. Because you acknowledge that you was messed up. You acknowledge that, God, I ain't about nothing. God, I can only work through you. I'm done. I am undone. I am unclean. And I hang with some folks that's unclean. So I know their uncleanness has rubbed off on me. He acknowledged his shortcomings. He confessed his sins. And God said, you're ready so after the cold touched his lips, he said, I also heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send? Hey, go away. And who would go for us? And he, he, I said, didn't even hesitate. He like, Who should you send who that me? Yeah. Yeah, man. Send me. You looking for somebody? I hear so many preachers. I ran. I ran. The Lord called me. I said, Nah. I ain't going out. I ain't going out. Sorry, that wasn't my story. I love the word of God, so I, I it, was, it was my destiny. I felt it was my destiny. I told God, I, I, I signed up. I signed up. I, I said, God, uh, I don't know how you're going to do it, but uh, I, I want to teach your word. I don't know how or what or why. I, I want to teach your word. I love your word so much. But I want to I want to be able to not just teach your word. I want to be able to make an impact with your word, with your power. I want I, I want people to understand what your word is talking about. I just I don't even I don't even know how you're gonna do it, but I want I'm gonna tell you what the Lord did. Mother Emma Crouch. Yes, Andre Crouch's mother. Came in the for years ago. When I saw her, she stood flat foot. Oh my God. She stood flat footed with one hand on one side of the pulpit and the other hand on the other side. She stood there. She didn't. Ah, she didn't do none of that. She just, the word just came out of her mouth. It fell out of her mouth. I looked at her. I said, God, that's, that's how 
all those I want folks to not be caught up in the, the, the animation. I don't want folks to be caught up in how I do that. I want, I want them to see you. I want them to hear you. I was ready. I was ready. I've been in the ministry for 34 years. There have been some rough times. There have been some hard times. There has to be some struggle. Did I give up? Did I want to throw in the towel? No. Because I believe that scripture. He that puts his hand to the side and looks back, ain't scared. I wasn't going to miss my opportunity. I said, God, you got to get me past this. God, you got to get me through this. You got to get me over this. God brought me through. All the struggles, all the strain, all the pressures, all the, all the, he brought me through. Never thought I'd be where I am today, but thank God. He's blessed my ministry. Thank God for you who are here to support my ministry. Thank God for Facebook. Thank God for YouTube. Y'all don't know. You say I'm a blessing to you. Y'all are a blessing to me. I thank God for your very life. I have my commitment. And I'm going to do what I got to do till my eyes close. And you better hope ain't no extra spirit in me, because I might, I might get up in my own field and start and say a word. So y'all better pray that when I go, uh, you know, cold my eyes, that I be so Because <laughs> I know y'all ain't going to be trying to do it. Now, I know she did. Now, what, what she doing? So she said, she said it now. She said she might preach at her own funeral. I don't think that's going to happen. I don't know now. You know, when he, Elijah, Elisha died, and he, you know, he asked for a double portion of Elijah's spirit, and his bones was in a grave. They dug him, you know, trying to dig up somebody else's grave, and they looked in the bones and they said, "Oh, it's just some bones." Elisha was dead, deteriorated, nothing but bones, baby. They threw that up. Threw the dude in there with him. Whoop! Tip. The dude came back alive because there was so much power still in Elisha's bones. Bones, honey. You talking about you want power in you? The man had power in his bones. That's some power. But who would go for it? Who would go for? I like this one. Go, we should let our animation, our way, our salvation. That's it. Don't get caught up in. You know that's all you. No, but I've always been animated. You know I come from animated, but I try to project the word and not so much the God. But I want people to see the word. A lot of people do demonstrations. I ain't got that yet. A lot of people do pictures and say I ain't got that yet. I have you, you have your style? I got mine. God gave you yours. God gave me mine. I thank you for it. Ah! Isaiah. Let's go to the practical point. In uncertain times, focus on God's sovereignty to find peace of mind. We got to do that right now. We got to do that right now because these are uncertain times. Now, but, but they're uncertain to some people. They're not uncertain to others. Because we know, if we read the Bible, and we read what's supposed to happen, we know what's happening. There was a shooting last night. Was, yeah, last night. And I heard, I heard the gunfire. And, I'm, and I just started praying. And the next few minutes, I heard where it was. And I'm like, oh, my goodness. Maybe lost his life. Maybe it was 15. Wrong place, wrong time. And, and they said the, at the time it was, he's supposed to be at home. Curfew. But what? Losing your life for what? We're living in perilous times. We're in the last day. We need gun control. What that going to do? We need stricter laws. What that's going to do? We got too many ways and too many avenues for folks to get weapons. What's that going to do? Laws or what? 
It's also for people that don't obey the law. Who would the, but you know the evilness is gonna always have a loophole. So what? We're in uncertain times. We got to know that God is still in control. No matter what's happening in the world, God is still in control. You can have peace of mind. Okay, yes, pray for the family. You can't pray this away. Pray for the family. That they would use this as a way to get seven. If they don't have the Lord, this will make it this will the Lord. Maybe they'll see it. Maybe they'll find God. And if you say, well, God, let me, let me. sometimes things like this make you recheck yourself. God, I want to make sure. God, I am. God, am I all right? I, I, what am I missing? Am I missing something? Am I, am I sure? Come Check yourself out. So you can have peace of mind in these last three days. Fear not. God's holiness, his supreme attribute, controls all that he does. I just said that. Fear not. God's, God's in control. What you afraid of? Oh my God. We know me. People talking about Russia. They're going to attack America. They're going to do this. They're going to do that. Hello. Excuse me. God said he was going to destroy. How was he going to destroy the world next time? By what? Fire. The fire God going to use ain't got nothing on these fires. See, these fires can be put out one way or another. Either by water or by chemical. They can put out. They can. But God's fire, <laughs> good luck with that. The awesomeness of God is greater than words or even a picture can describe, baby. We, we know that because we be like, Lord, what, can, what other words can be used? Talk about you. What else can you say? We try to find words. We just use the little few words we got. But God is just the more man understands God's holiness, the more he understands his own sinfulness. See that? The more you, when I, like I said, when you look in your mirror, you look good. You look. You look good. You look good. But then we look at God's mirror. I don't look good. But when you understand, don't ever try to put yourself above God. God, I'm on, I'm your vessel. You control me. You deal with me. You fix me. Keep me with my keep my mind stayed on you. Keep my focus on you. Yes, I'm going to see other stuff. But you need to keep my mind on you. Y'all got, you know, I'm going I'm to say this. Thing. You need to watch. Pay attention. Be careful about what you watch on TV. Because everything on TV, things shouldn't even be indulging in. Because when we talk about it as a sin, oh, but we feel it's okay on TV. You're still, you're still promoting the same thing. What makes it any different? Because it's on TV. It's just make believe, but there are people out there doing it for real. And you're okay with it because it's on TV. God's not okay with it, whether it's on TV or out there for real. So you got to see is God pleased with me watching this? Because some of that stuff gave me out too. I, I, I'm careful about it. Because I don't want none of it to do it. No kind of way. Because I get to watch that guy, the, the devil sneaking, he'll be dry. He'll be like, go to the end. You miss Bible study, trying to watch TV. God is always ready to forgive those who are ready to repent. When you're ready, your mind is made up. 
your mind is made up to work for God, can't nobody let you. When your mind is made up to do what you're going to do, you can't stop. That's why you got to be careful what you make up your mind to do. Can God get the glory out of this? Can God get the glory over here? Can he get the glory over here? When I do this, did God get the glory? Or this is this, this, this just for my glory? But when you're ready to give it up for God, God will take, take notice. God will fix you in his church. Hearing God's call is one thing. Hey, my God, oh God. Heeding God's call is quite another. Let me read that again. Hearing God's call is one thing. Heeding God's call, obeying, going through with God's call is quite another. Do both. Don't only hear the call, but heed to the call. You know, like, either you or your child, go take out the trash. Okay. Did I tell you to take out the trash? Okay, I'm, I'm going to do it right now. Do it right now. That's hearing. But not hearing. God gives you project. Okay, Lord. Um, did not give you a project? Uh, yeah, yeah, okay, I, I get, okay, Lord. Uh, I uh, okay, I'm 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 coming. I'm I'm you know I'm just uh, gotta work on some things. What exactly do you have to work? On? What comes before God? What do you have to fix before you obey? What do you have to take care of before you do what God says? Now, what if God tells you to do something and you go do your own thing because you feel that's what you need to do? And God blocks everything. And he puts you in a corner where all you can do is do what he says. You want to do your own thing. But God says, I need you to do this. He said, God, see God, I, I, I'm, I'm going to do it like this. I'm God says, okay. And he locks you in. And you can't do nothing for what he asked you to do. Example. Don't say you come on. I mean, it's going to get awkward. Getting it done there. Oh, too bad. Done too bad. Because you ain't going to find it there. I was singing. Didn't minister. And then I was ministering. You know, I've been singing all my life. So I was like, okay, God, I know how to preach now. This is the Linda. And I was, you know, you know, I, I preach now, so I told her, I told the Lord, God, I, and you know, I need to be singing. So, you know, so I said, I, you know, I want, you know, I want to minister now. I want to just preach. I don't want to sign this book. You know? and I said, no, that's a ministry in your singing as well. So, you know, you're going to be singing. And, no, God, come on now. Let's, you know, let's, 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 let's compromise. You know, now I, want, I need to be. And so I went to the table again with him and I just got sad. Okay. So God put me in a situation where they didn't believe in women teaching. They believed in the men. You know, women could speak only on special occasions. They couldn't speak on, you know, family, you know, women. So he put me in a situation where all I could do was that. That was the longest six months. I said, and, and, and I didn't fight because I knew what God was doing. I couldn't say none, none word. I couldn't say nothing. So when I got there, I was like, you know, when God spanked you real good, you know it's him, and you're like, I didn't say, God, if you give me, I said, I've done enough trying to negotiate. I'm going to sit here and take my punishment. I'm going to shut up. 
I said, well, God in this thing. Because God had his own time when he was going to have me doing both. I was ready to see now. When that six months was over with, I didn't think it was going to ever end. When that six months was over with, our baby gave me text me saying, Here, what? Which, how many songs you want me to sign? Yeah! Huh? My commission. When you multi talented, you do more than one thing. You got whatever God wants me to do, that's what I'm going to do. I wasn't trying to pick. I need to. I'm going to pick this thing. I'm going to. Whatever I needed to do, that's what I was doing. Mm -hmm. So when God commissions you to do something, do that. Don't be fussed by God. See, oh, see, oh, uh uh. What well, God wants you to do, you do this. Thing. And then you can say, like Isaiah. So who will go, God will say, who will go for it? Here I am. Be willing to go. Don't worry about who. God will take care of who. Don't worry about what. God will take care of what. Don't worry about the where. God will take care of what. All they want you to do is go. God, I got to know where I'm going. What? You might not go. You just you see God big head. You going and you end up you like. Up here. I don't even like these people. Oh, you know what you say? You don't like them people. That's why God you got you there, cause you he, he need to work on you. You ever notice when you not comfortable about something, you want to avoid it? Mm -hmm. And before you know it, you right in the middle of what you tried to avoid. I'm not trying to teach you that. I'm not trying to help you. I'm not trying to strengthen you. Don't be mad because he put you in that situation. I don't, I don't even like her. Why oh, you don't like her? Is the devil talking to you, Sid? You a Christian? You don't like her, man? Okay. Uh, I like her, but I can't stand her way. That's the light form of hate, baby. Stop it. Stop it. Because if you, once, after a while, you keep not liking their ways, you're going to end up not liking them. Because their way is going to start getting on your nerves. And after a while, you're going to start seeing them and not their way. Then after a while, you're going to start hating them and their way. So, get your saved self. So, <laughs> that being said, you're going to do right. You're going to do better. You're going to get better. Aren't you Hey. Amen. Hope I said something that can help you in your life, help you in your spiritual walk. Like I say, if I can't help you, I know I'm not gonna hurt you. I'm gonna hurt your feelings. But you'll be okay. They say, like, oh, she hurt me, God. She kicked me in the knee. And my girl say, kick me in the ankle. She stepped on my foot, Lord. Yep, that was it. Some big old rock for So Jacob had that, that hollow in the side. He was limping. So sometimes God had to limp him. <laughs> temporarily. Hey, I lie. You know, we, we got to get it all, you know, get, got to get messed up a little bit. You know, let you see. Well, y'all, tomorrow, I'll be a year older. <laughs> oh, my God. So I thank God for all of y'all. Thank God for. Allow me to see another birthday tomorrow. The Lord said it's time. And y'all keep praying for me. I will pray for you. And let's go to heaven together. <laughs> All right? All right. Be blessed.